the uh, Yestival been going so far? Oh, it's been going great. Um, lots of great fans of all these genres, Todd Rundgren, Carl Palmer, LP, yes, sort of mixture. It's been really good. Right, awesome. Now, I know that some members of Yes, including yourself, have worked with Carl Palmer in the past, you know, specifically with Asia, and, you know, it's obviously a great fit, but how did you guys end up choosing uh, Rundgren uh, to join this tour? Uh, we were talking about who would be a great opener in Japan after the last tour, and uh, just throwing concepts around and, and artists and bands. I'm a huge Todd fan, so I threw his name into the hat. Thankfully, it's it's worked out. Awesome, yeah, that's great. I, I I think there's tons of Todd fans everywhere, and yeah, I've seen him a few a uh, few years ago, and he always puts on a great show. So, looking forward to to this show coming up on Sunday. Um, that's good. That's great. So, the past few Yes tours, uh, you guys have been playing different album sides, or you know, a couple different sides from different albums. Now, this time out, uh, it looks like you guys are playing one song from the first ten albums, uh, plus a few other songs. Now, but uh, that's a great idea. Who came up with that concept? And do you guys ever change the songs from the albums? You know, each night. Um, I, I think the concept started with Steve and. Uh... You know, he kind of selected the tracks that he thought would fit best in the set, and we all agreed and just started working on it in rehearsal, and it came together really quick. Um, so so it was, it's a good thing. It, it takes you from the beginning, as you said, through the first 10 albums. And um, for the diehard fans who are there, they, you know, they know it all, and, and they're right there with it. So, so it's worked out quite well. Cool. Great. Now, uh, looking back on your career, um, how did you first get uh, interested in playing music? Uh, my parents were musicians and entertainers. My dad, uh, uh, Bobby Sherwood, was a big band leader in the 40s okay. and had his own successful records and television career and film stuff. And my mother was a chorus line dancer on Broadway. And the two of them got together and formed an act and moved to Vegas when uh, this, you know, the town was really coming alive in the early days. And they worked there forever, and I grew up in that environment, of them working in the household, always having a band rehearsal in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? It just seemed like the logical path. Okay. Um, well, how many instruments do you play, and which one is your favorite to play? Well, I play drums, keys, bass, um, guitar, and, you know, I guess harmonica now. Okay, due to Chris and, and you and I, um, and I, I really enjoy playing all of them. It, uh, you know, I, I fall into different pockets um, from you know different periods of my career where I'm playing more bass than I have guitar. Um, you know, I play guitar in Circa, and uh, you know, I, I switched over from bass from to guitar in Circa because I wanted to play more guitar there. And I do a lot of solo albums where I play everything myself and love playing drums and, and tracking drums. I've played on a bunch of records for other people as well. And, uh, you know, keys is something that I'm not great at. My brother's a great keyboard player, Mike Sherwood. Okay. Um, I'm not that prolific on keys that I could go out on tour and play keys, but any of the other three slots I'm happy to do. Um, I've yet to play drums on a tour, but maybe that's coming. I don't know. Well, that's, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Gotta keep it fresh, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, do you remember the first uh, uh, person or band you saw in concert? Um, the first concert I ever saw was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. Okay. Uh, in '76, and uh, they were fantastic. I, I love that band. I always have. And um, it was just a great concert. And I was very young and uh, impressionable, and the whole you know production and everything was just outstanding. Uh, and then the second concert I saw was going for the one um, the year after, but uh, yes, and uh, became seriously addicted to yes ever since, obviously. Wow, how about that? <laughs> that is very cool. Huh. And, and Earth, Wind, and Fire still doing it. I just saw those guys about a month ago, you know, with uh, you know, Philip yeah. Bailey and those guys. I mean, it's, yeah, it's great stuff, man. Great it's stuff. Great. Yeah. I, mean, I always kind of thought of them as the sort of progressive end of, of funk and soul and, you know, R&B. I agree. And uh, that's why I was drawn to it, you know. Very good. Um, now, you were in a couple different bands early in your career. How did you end up meeting Chris Squire and uh, a few other guys from Yes? Well, uh, strangely... 
we have an album called World Trade, which um, is now currently our, our third album was just released um, August 4th. And uh, it's the featured album at Amazon this week, which is kind of exciting. This new World Trade album called Unify. But that band made a record in 1987, 88. We were starting to get the demos together. And Chris heard the demos. And, it, and, it, and they, yes, was at a point where, if you recall, there was this thing, ABWH, yep. which was at the right. And then you had Yes uh, without a lead singer at that point. And they were trying to figure out what they were going to do and go forward. And it's at that point that um, I was introduced to Chris and uh, to possibly be the lead singer of Yes, which, as things progressed, uh, seemed like a good idea to everybody around except for me. I just didn't want to do that at that point in my career. Um, so through that relationship, though, I, I remained in the loop. Obviously, you know, I wrote the song "Where We Live" with Chris on the Union album, and and then I subsequently, you know, have had this long career with the band over these many years now. Um, but that's really where it started. You know, Chris heard my demos, and you know, back then I, my voice was a bit higher. I'm a lot older now, but back then into the sort of John Anderson range and how I was doing things melodically attracted him. Uh, and that's that's really what started the ball rolling. Great. Wow, that's awesome. So then you ended up being a, a touring musician with Yes in the 90s, is that correct? Yeah, that, um, in 94 when they put the talk record out, um, I got a call from Trevor Raven, will you come out and uh, play with the band? You know, we'd like to have you you know, doing multiple instruments or whatnot, and and also, you know, maybe do something with Chris, which ended up being a double bass thing for uh, the song Endless Dream, which was kind of fun. So I, I uh, yeah, it was my first uh, toe in the water of a major tour and working with Yes on that sort of level that you don't really get to see all that often. Wow. And it was a, it was a great experience. I bet. Man, that sounds, that sounds awesome. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you worked on some other projects in the 2000s, according, you know, including Circa, which you mentioned, and Yoso, which actually I saw the Yoso show when you guys played in Kent, you know, about seven, eight years ago. Um, oh, wow. Are there any other plans for either Circa or Yoso albums or tours in the future? Well, Circa's last record came out about, I think, eight months ago now. Oh, okay. Um, and it's called Valley of the Windmill. And it's a very cool record that we're proud of. And as far as playing live, you know, with any band uh, that I'm involved with, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but my schedule's just super, super busy right now to sort of focus on anything else. Um, yes, it's taken a lot of time, and re more recently, um, with John Wetton's passing and him wanting to do what I'm doing with, you know, as Chris asked me to do it, yes, yeah, step in and take his spot. Um, John wanted the same thing for Asia, so we just finished... 45 shows um, not too long ago and then went straight into yes rehearsal so I'll be out on the road here for four months total something like that so it's kind of hard to say if there's going to be an opening in the calendar to be able to do such things but that said uh, all the bands that I'm involved with you know want to play live and and it, it would be a great time that's for sure it's just a matter of uh, seeing how the timing will work out. Right. Actually, that was my next question about about Asia. So, are there plans uh, uh, to tour with that band as well? Well, right now there's um, nothing on paper, so to speak. Um, it was very fresh with John's passing, and right. they come in that tour with Journey long before, so that was already in place. And and now out here on the road, Carl is the opening act for Yestival, so. Uh, our head down, just trying to get done with the, the mission at hand. Um, that said, I hope there will be more, because it certainly felt like a good thing to do, and the band sounded really, really good. And so uh, I would hope that it could continue, because it's a great legacy of music to carry on with. Great. That's awesome. Well, well, hopefully you do. That's actually one band I've never seen. I've never got to see uh, Asia, so I'd like to <laughs> have you guys come around. I think the closest you came to Cleveland was Toledo, so and I, I couldn't make that happen this uh, this past spring, but um, hopefully that's something in the book. So, um, going back, uh, Getty Lee has said that uh, learning Chris Squire's bass parts were, he said, hey, uh, first difficult, then after a while, still difficult. Uh, what do you think is one of the... <laughs> what do you think is one of the... 
the more difficult songs to play. Well, you know, I'd, I'd agree at first that it's kind of strange to look at. The Christmas space compositions are filled with so many notes and <clears throat> nuances that to really get it nailed, it does take a study, you know what I mean? Um, I guess I have an advantage over Getty in this department in that Getty was in Rush and doing his own thing right. while I was playing the Yes record, so it's, <laughs> it's not really fair. But uh, for me, that stuff comes super easy. Because I know it so well and love it, and uh, I don't really find any of the basslines that I play in Yes to be difficult in terms of like thinking, wow, this is difficult. Am I going to make it? You know, it just all flows very naturally for me, and I think you know that's a, a statement as well of, of why Chris knew I could kind of slide in here and make things seamless because you know we. We worked very closely together for years. He was my hero. I I got a chance to sort of learn all of his tricks up close and personal. And we also had our band conspiracy outside of Yes. And there are many times, you know, we're playing the bass parts together. And, you know, so it just is this real natural sort of zone of uh, playing for me that, that I would, you know, say is not difficult. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be difficult for me to figure out what Kenny's doing in Rush because he sounds amazing mm. and he's got all these killer bass lines that he does with his fingers and I play with a pick so that's also maybe you know one of those crossroads for players that, that is difficult you know either you sort of commit to being a finger player or a pick player I think early on and you're growing up playing and, and you know kenny has got it down with his fingers he makes that thing sound amazing Right. I, I don't know if I can generate that kind of tone the way I play, but I know that, you know, my world is closer to Chris's, that's, and that's why it makes it so sort of easy. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, great answer. Um, what, what is your favorite Yes song to play live? Um, God, there's so many, but I, I must say, to date, in a just sort of selfish way, ritual, because there's just great bass parts all over the place, great harmony, and quite an extensive bass solo that I got to play and stretch out on, so that would be my answer. Okay, awesome. Um, being on tour, like you said, you've been on tour pretty much all of this year. What do you like to do on a day off? Sleep. Because <laughs> 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 it's random acts of sleep out here, you know, based on travel and and the gigs, and especially with this package, because we don't start till 9.20, so the gig's not over, and then we do a meet and greet, you know, by the time you're back at the hotel, and, uh, you know, I don't know about the other guys, but I get pretty wired up after a show. It takes me a long time to sort of decompress. Right. Um, but uh, television and a bed helps that along. <laughs> so the next day, if it's a day off, you just sort of don't move a lot, you know, and then re recharge. There you go. That makes sense, too. Um, what's the one thing you can't live without while you're on tour? What's, like, the one item you need to have? Well, I would love to be able to have my PC gaming computer and uh, get into some Battlefield 4. <laughs> That's my personal addiction when I'm home and not working on music. I love that, that game. <laughs> I'm just so addicted to it. And uh, but, yeah, I miss that. I'm looking forward to sort of just chilling at home for a minute and playing some Battlefield. There you go. Over. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I, I read that you guys are doing something uh, for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's a new exhibit. Are you going to be a part of that? I think I think Sunday afternoon yes. or something? Yeah, we're going to come down and be a part of that. It's very cool. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there and uh, checking out the exhibit myself. Okay, awesome. All right, well, to finish up, so so what can fans expect from this show? Sounds like it's a, it's a killer lineup, and, uh, uh, you know, what, what can we expect? It's just a nonstop musical adventure all night. Uh, you know, Carl comes out and plays excerpts from all of our beloved ELP tracks, and, uh, you know, they're, his band is phenomenal. The guitar player is great. The bass player plays stick. He's fantastic. And he's just got a great band. And then you got Todd Rundgren up there playing great stuff with great musicians as well. Prairie Prince, Jesse yeah. on guitar, and one of my all time heroes outside of Chris was Chasm Sultan growing up, the bass player from UK, uh, Utopia. Okay. And, uh, it, it, he's there, and for me, I'm, you know, I'm just following him around the, the backstage, 
talk to him and see if I can pick up any tricks from him. Because he's one of my heroes. And he, he plays great. The, the, the band just sounds phenomenal. Obviously, Todd's fantastic. And uh, Greg, they got this keyboard player from the car. who's just been in it for a long time. It's, it's a very good band. And then we play and uh, do this chronological set, which takes you through a large chunk of U.S. history. So it's, uh, it's an adventure. Wow. Awesome. Well, it sounds great. Uh, Billy, again, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. I'm looking forward to see you uh, see you guys on Sunday afternoon. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, bud. We'll get this posted uh, probably sometime today. All right. <laughs> All right, man. We'll see you. Bye-bye.